uh, move on to another um, to our next guest, Josh Eldridge. But uh, thanks for being on the show. The segment brought to you by Bison Creek Capital. All right, uh, Josh Eldridge, thanks for uh, showing up. I appreciate you being here for the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. You have got just an amazing website, amazing service. I'm looking at it, and it just, you know, I mean, my hat's off to you. You've done a great work, great job. Give our audience a little background on you, and then let's get into Upend PR. Great name, by the way. Well, with that intro, I better deliver, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, my other company, Savings Angel, I launched about 11 years ago. And like a lot of other startup owners, I didn't have a whole lot of money going into this thing. But I knew that, exp- or, uh, that exposure was everything. So uh, I was a journalist in the United States Navy, and I did broadcast journalism. And so had some comfort level with that. So instead of uh, paying for advertising and Google AdWords and, and that sort of thing. I, I actually just reached out to local media. I worked with uh, local uh, radio. I worked with local TV and local newspapers and uh, somehow convinced them to let me in. Um, and I started participating uh, with different segments where I focused on delivering as much value as I possibly could to those audiences. And, of course, with Savings Angel, our whole mission was to help people cut their grocery bill in half and, uh, and, and save money on every area of their life. I'm kind of known as the guy who can get you a deal or hook up or know how to uh, uh, just get favorable outcomes in, in any money issue. All right. What about the, the up in PR? How is it different from mm-hmm. other PR firms? Yeah. So we, we became very successful at this. I've been in the media over 2,000 times and generated about $6 million in revenue. So, uh, and we spent less than $500 in advertising. So that was pretty attractive. So I just started working in our local startup community, doing a lot of mentoring, and, and that kind of turned into paid consulting and workshops and speaking. And, uh, and then people wanted to give me money. So I said, well, okay, I'll, I'll take money, and uh, that's kind of how it began. And so what we do that's different is that we serve, first off, we serve an audience that's looking for more buzz is looking to become an influencer, but they don't have eight, ten, twenty thousand dollars a month to spend. So we serve the audience uh, that's kind of early growth stage uh, that says, "Well, what can I get for under two thousand dollars?" And so we use a lot of growth hacking techniques. We use some PR tactics. Uh, we really focus on building authority that then leads to influence, which of course moves all the indicators like sales, conversion rate, um, inbound leads. Uh, everything just seems to work a lot better when you are well-known. What's the difference between advertising and authority building? Yeah, so advertising today generally is going to give you very high control. You can control exactly what you want to say and do. However, uh, I think today, more so than ever before, people are naturally, and, and I'd say it, it, as a consumer advocate, they have a healthy skepticism over advertising messages. So what we want to do is build natural authority. So someone who is already well-respected in their space can just inform and educate and inspire people, and in so doing, they'll get everything that they're after. I'm very much a fan of just giving, 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 and people are pretty bright, and if they see that there's a match there, they'll come find you and they'll come do business with you. Where do you find the best media contacts, and how do you reach out to them? I find the best media contacts. I, you know, we always like to identify low-hanging fruit. We also like to look at, well, where is your ideal client? Where are they already congregating? And so given that, I mean, that's ultimately where we want to go now. I'm a big fan of if you want to connect with any influencer, anyone in the media, that you start with Twitter. Twitter, you might not like as a social media platform, but holy cow, for reaching out with to, to about anyone you want, it's, it's amazing. And we're, we're big, big fans of the Twitter platform. Do you like Twitter better than, say, LinkedIn for business people? It, they're a little bit different. So if you are focused on B2B sales, no, I would absolutely focus on LinkedIn. If you are interested in reaching out to and establishing an initial connection with someone who might be an influencer or someone who's actively working in the media, then Twitter is a great first place to go. 
So you make an introduction. They get to know who you are. You get to know who they are. It might not go much further than that, but what you want to do is get permission then to take the conversation to a platform like, say, email. Now, of course, LinkedIn is fantastic because it's going to really cement your authority. Uh, and so I'm a big, big, big fan of using LinkedIn in a very smart way. All right. We've got about a minute left in this segment. We'll go to a break and come back on the other side with more questions. But in, in, in closing on this segment, increasing your customers and your profits by becoming more visible, drill down on that for just a minute. Right. So again, today more than any, uh, more than any time, I, I believe, is that when I'm considering making a purchase or someone reaches out to me, say someone on um, your sales staff reaches out to me, um, I'm going to do some due diligence. It's so easy to do due diligence today. And so if I do a Google search, if I go to your website, if I go and look at what you look like on social media, there's going to be some indicators there. And that to me, that is going to make all the difference in the world, whether I buy or not. I got it. All right, Josh, let's take a break. Come back. And I have a load of questions for you on the other side. All right. Awesome. All right. Josh Eldridge, upendpr.com, U-P-E-N-D-P-R.com. You've been listening to CEO Money with Michael Yorba, your host. This segment is brought to you by our title sponsor, Tycon Partners. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. My guest this segment, Josh Eldridge, Up in PR. He's on a mission to help entrepreneurs attract the perfect audience. All right, Josh, welcome back to the show. Michael, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, what I wanted to get into on this segment, if we could, is how much money can you make with great publicity? Every, that's on everybody's <laughs> mind. That's the bottom line there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of funny. I was just at the Inc. 5000 event, and uh, one company that they highlighted was Halo Top Ice Cream, which is actually a pretty great, uh, high protein, a little bit healthier for you. Well, they attributed a lot of their success to, I want to say it was like Vanity Fair or GQ magazine, where someone had actually done an article all about what would happen if you ate Halo Top Ice Cream for an entire week. Well, as a result of that article, uh, they landed at number three, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on the uh, Inc. 5000 fastest growing companies. It can absolutely do wonders for your business. I mean, imagine if you had, uh, you know, an amazing influencer uh, wave their magic wand uh, in front of their millions of audience members. I mean, do you think that could be good for your business? Absolutely. Well, that is all accomplished with PR. Most of the time, Michael, uh, per becoming famous and being discovered does not happen by accident. It takes very, very conscious effort and work in order to do that. And that's typically why most PR agencies charge a lot of money. I've got to become one of your clients. I've got to do that. Let me let me move forward on another question I have for you. Online businesses making more money. How can that happen? Well, um, I, I think that online businesses are, are in a great position to um, profit from being more visible. So uh, you know, today, I mean, we've got more uh, congregations of, of audiences than ever before. So if there is a, a YouTube uh, influencer that you resonate with, a podcaster, if there are other uh, bloggers that have large audiences, all of these people, I think that if you approach them, not from a, hey, we want you to just talk about our product and, and uh, so we can sell lots of stuff. If you take a different approach, and my approach always is, Michael, is that what value can I bring to that audience and what's the greatest amount of value I could possibly bring to that audience. I often find myself in a position, most of our clients, we, we just don't really do a lot of paid engagement. Most of what we do is authentic and organic because it's focused on service. And when you wake up in the morning and you say, who can I serve today? It's just so much better to be in that business than waking up every morning saying, who can I sell to today? Exactly. That is the mantra. That's the mantra everybody needs to get out, get out to there. All right. So why do businesses need, I mean, we, this is rhetorical for me, but for some people in the audience, maybe it isn't, but why do businesses need press kits and a digital reputation? Oh my gosh. So here's what's going to happen. 
it, let's say I get a cold email, and, and there are a lot of outbound sales that involve you know, maybe connecting on LinkedIn, email, um, or maybe you've got a commercial or a banner ad that I see. So I'll click on that because I'm curious. I, I'm not, you haven't raised the no like, and trust factor yet with me. And then when I take a look at your website, and that's fine, I, I'm still not ready to buy because I want to know what the honest reviews are. And those aren't necessarily the ones you house on your site. I want to go around, look on social media. I want to see what's been written about you. Um, have there been stories written about you? When I find that stuff and that third-party validation comes in, I'm in. Like if I already like the product and then all of a sudden I see all these other people talking good about your product, that's all it takes. Is I, I just want to know what other people. I mean, so we all want to do that. We, we we don't want to be the person that makes a dumb decision. And by kind of confirming that with not just the crowd, but also um, in, let's call them influencers. And again, those influencers can be on social media. Those influencers can be in the traditional media, or they could be um, just high authority experts. Um, but you know, when I get that feeling that everyone's talking about you then your authority goes way up, and, and I pull out my credit card. You know, you make me feel good for being on the show, knowing that you had to go through the checklist before you accepted my invitation to be on the show. <laughs> well, you do. You made me feel good with that statement. So how does someone become an authority in their industry, though? That's really where you start to get some traction. Sure, sure. And so and there's a big difference between having authority and having influence. And I think authority really is just it starts by owning it. Most of us don't give ourselves enough credit for just how smart we are in a particular venue. So I, I think today it really takes just that little bit of courage where you say, you know what, I've read a bunch of books on it. I've been doing, uh, you know, I've, I've been doing this thing for many years. I know a lot. I should now start teaching what I know. And don't worry about giving away the, the secret sauce or whatever like that's just today's economy. It's, it's, I, I believe very strongly in just giving it all away. You know, give away your value and, you know, people will be attracted to that and they'll come and want to do business with you. So as you give and teach more and more and more, and maybe you get the opportunity to be on certain platforms, that is naturally going to raise your authority. And as you raise your authority and you also become very visible, now you have influence. All right. Minute and a half, maybe minute left. Uh, Cardinal sin for the newsroom, and how can you get me on the Today Show? Yeah. <laughs> so the cardinal sin, I would tell you, is to stop over-promoting. When you get the opportunity to serve, uh, just do that. Play the long game. Because if you do, that influencer, uh, let's, uh, Michael, I think, you, you know, if I bring a lot of value to your audience, you appreciate that. And so the likelihood that, that you would invite me back sometime in the future goes up. However, if I got on here and I just started, oh, you got to go and visit my website and all oh, that top secret, that's, a, you know, that's on page 37 of my new book. I'm not going to do that um, because I know uh, I, I want to gain and earn the respect of your audience as opposed to have to shove down my message uh, down their throat. And again, on the Today Show, it's really easy. All roads go through Michael Yorba. Remember that. <laughs> and I mean that because uh, if you want to get on the Today Show, they're not going to touch you unless you've already done national media. National media is not going to touch you until you've done major market media, and major market media won't touch you until you've done smaller market media. Okay, we're talking after the show. Thanks, Josh. Thank you, Michael. My pleasure. Josh Eldridge, upendpr.com.